focus on the state's race for governor. Abrams would become the country's first female African-American governor. Are going to elect Brian Kemp. Has this ever happened to you before? Never. How long have you been voting? Oh, my life, ever since I was old enough. But I've been voting right here, ever since 1968. We're not going to let them steal this election. I mean, we, we're going to stand up for what's right here, but they ain't going to steal it from these people. Look at all these Americans here. He's upholding the voters' law of America. Either your signature matches or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, you don't get to vote. You have to come back in and redo the thing. And I think if they throw rocks, we should kill them. <laughs> That's what Trump said. See? <laughs> and it's just, it's horrible. And, and I say that because the West End, she's been in this community back when we could when they were doing sit-ins she held civil rights meetings in her home and today to come out and not be able to vote and no one can give you an explanation like it's extremely emotional and it bothers me it bothers me to my core like there's actually no record of her whatsoever voting in any election whatsoever and it's ridiculous i'm sorry And that day, all over Georgia, other voters found their names just vanished from the voter rolls. Who took away their vote? I'm Brian Kemp. I'm so conservative. Got a big truck. Just in case I need to round up criminal illegals and take them home myself. Brian Kemp. Yep, I just said that. Used his special power as Secretary of State of Georgia to simply cancel Christine Jordan's voter registration. Who would benefit from removing Mrs. Jordan from the voter rolls? In just two days, the people of Georgia are going to elect Brian Kemp. Well, thank you, Mr. President. We're so glad that you have Georgia on your mind. But Kemp had a problem. In 2014, an investigative reporter with Rolling Stone named Greg Pallas got his hands on a secret, highly confidential computer file from inside the office of the man in charge of the voter rolls, Secretary of State Brian Kemp. The list targeted an astounding 580,000 voters. For 20 years, reporter Greg Pallas has been investigating attacks on the right to vote. Look, here's a number that I uncovered. 340,134 voters. They were removed illegally from the voter rolls of Georgia before the 2018 midterm election. That's a lot of voters. They were removed by a Republican state official who's the guy who's running for governor. Pallas flew to Atlanta to investigate. When I'm in, at the Ebenezer Baptist Church, I happen to run into the leader of the Democrats in the state legislature. Her name is Stacey Abrams. The Republican officials, they have begun a process of removing voters. So I showed her the list and she, she was like, what the heck is this? She's never seen this. And I'm deeply concerned at our Secretary of State that someone who works for the people of Georgia has decided to spend his time and energy trying to purge voters as opposed to what a Secretary of State should be committed to, which is enfranchising voters to the best of his ability. If Kemp could get away with removing hundreds of thousands of voters, and if other states picked up his purge trick, it could elect a president. Breaking news, this is a big political story. Thousands of Wisconsin voters will be removed from the state's voter registry following the ruling of an Ozaki County judge. And I don't know why it is that we have people who are, who are so adamant about making sure that we take people off the registration roll. 
In 2016, Donald Trump was elected president by just 77,000 votes, about the size of a Beyonce concert. But over 2 million voters showed up at the polls and were told their registrations had been eliminated, vanished. Was Trump elected by the voters, or was he elected, and will he be re-elected, by eliminating voters? The voters eliminated are known as the purged. to this point where there's no love at all for a whole group of people who are not going to understand when they go to vote why they're getting hassled. Wisconsin's Republican legislature had voted to eliminate 129,000 voters, six times Trump's teeny 2016 victory margin. The state said they moved. They left the state palace, questioned one of the voters Republican officials said had left Milwaukee. This is Sequana Taylor. Found out last week that I was on the purge list. Okay, so what are your positions here? Yep, so Milwaukee County Supervisor District 2 and School Board Director District 3. It comes down to a simple question. Did these voters actually move? Palace took the purge list to the nation's top experts on address verification. This is John Lenzer. Well, we've worked for everybody from Home Depot to Amazon. I've worked for 300 to 400 different companies. They use advanced address hygiene to correct their databases and make sure they have the correct address of, of their customers so that their mailings are more accurate. We use 240 different data feeds from all kinds of companies, uh, subscriptions to magazines, your mortgage address, pretty much anything you subscribe to, and they maintain a file of a person's correct address. I would think that whether it be the state of Wisconsin or the state of Georgia or other states that have use these techniques would be well advised to use advanced address hygiene. They'd save a lot of money and have a, a more accurate result. They know where I'm at. They know where to find me. It's not hard. But those directing the purge don't even look at the state's records. I never left the state. I never left the county. So all they had to do was look at my DMV record and they would see that I live in the same county. And not just any voters get purged. The hit list targeted one in seven of the state's black, Hispanic, and Asian American voters. You could call this Purgeville. And the purge list was also filled with young voters. Hello, my name is Pio. I'm 21 years of age. I currently go to Madison College. Because I moved two houses down from where I used to live, I was removed from the voter rolls, and that's just, that's just not fair. False stories, all made up, lies. And voter fraud is all too common. So do you believe that there's fraud in Michigan? Well, we've been very aggressive in uh, closing vulnerabilities and loopholes. Well, I, to I fraud. see the aggression. It was a shock when Trump won Michigan and by a mere 10,700 votes. But the state had purged at least 60,000 voters based on a secret list. Palast went to investigate surprising the Secretary of State of Michigan with the secret purge list. 499,092 Michiganders are on this suspect list. Mm -hmm. Is this to eliminate fraud or is this to eliminate voters? It's to clean our voter lists and well, ensure that there's you, no vulnerability now, for fraud. Statistical experts who have looked at this list say it's heavily overweighted against minorities because it's using, it's just basically a, a list of common names. Mr. I'm not familiar Michael with that. Brown, Jose Garcia. Mm -hmm. Could I, you imagine that that would be a problem in terms? I, of I did not know Brown was uh, identified with one race. No, the Brown other. was a common name in America, it, and it's, it's a, a black very name. common name. It's I a very not, common black name in America. Yes. I, I've known a lot of white Browns. I am urging my supporters to go into the polls and watch very carefully because that's what has to happen. I am urging them to do it. They're called poll watchers, a very safe, very nice thing. But if I see tens of thousands of ballots being manipulated, I can't go along with that. Yes, Jesus love me. Yes, Jesus love me. 
Yes, Jesus loved me. This is Christine Jordan's home, the one they said she'd left. I grew up in Atlanta. So, you know, and I grew up around like constantly hearing about the civil rights movement and everything that people have done for us to get this, to get this power. And to know that it was taken away from my grandmother, like next year it could be taken away from me. Like you never know. And I, I was just really hurt. And I, I, I really couldn't believe it. I, <laughs> I could not believe it. It was time to talk to Kemp. Mr. Kemp, are you removing black voters from the voter rolls just so you can win this election? Sir, please do not touch him. I'm not, I'm not touching him. Mr. Kemp, why are you purging voters from the voter rolls? Okay, has some Okay, sir, why aren't you answering my questions? Sir, why do we have to sue you to get the to get the names of voters who've been removed? So it's like. You were disappeared, like you were not even a person. That's what I said. I was dead and gone, buried. <laughs> but I'm still on top of the earth by the help of the master. Since I was about five, I've been going with her to vote. Every year, like religiously. And she always made sure I got my voter sticker. You gotta get your sticker. And so, it that and that's another reason why I was hurt, because I know that I've been there with her. She showed her family album, including several photos of her having dinner with Martin Luther King's family. Daddy King was my great uncle. Our nation is witnessing a merciless campaign to wipe out our history, to fame our heroes, erase our values, and indoctrinate our children. Then she told us the three most powerful words ever spoken by an American. I will vote.